Today's video is going to conclude our three-day unit on graphing, and it's going to be primarily spent on domain and range as well as um, what we know as vertical asymptotes and holes in the graph. So first of all, if you take a look at number one, this is going to be a linear function. Okay. So that's x to the first, which means it's linear. And unless it's a special case where it's a vo uh, vertical or horizontal line, then the domain and range are always going to be negative infinity to infinity. Okay. We are going to have some restrictions on domain, ra domain and range as we go throughout the examples, depending on what type of function it is. So if we look at number two, this is a square root function, and how did I know that? Well, there was a square root in the equation. Okay. So when we're working on square root functions, remember that it's always going to come from this, which in this example is going to be the point 2, comma 4. Okay. So since the coefficient in front of x is positive, then we are going to start at the starting point, close bracket at 2, and go to positive infinity. For the range, since a equals 1, that's the number in front of the square root, and it's positive, we are going to start at 4 and go to positive infinity. Okay, close brackets at 2 and 4, open brackets for the infinities. Okay. In example 3, this is an absolute value function. And the domain and the range of the absolute value come from the vertex. And the vertex in this example is negative 4, negative 1. Okay. The domain is always going to be negative infinity to infinity for absolute value, just like quadratics. But the range depends on the starting point, which in this case is, going, is at negative 1. And if you take a look at A, a is negative 1 here, so that means our graph, our absolute value function, is opening down. So we are going to come up from negative infinity for the range and stop at negative 1. Okay. In example 4, this is an exponential function. Remember that if there's a variable in the exponent, it's exponential. And there's not any restrictions for an exponential function's domain. So this is negative infinity to infinity. But if you recall from yesterday, the range um, has restrictions because of the asymptote, which, remember, is the line that our graph approaches but never touches. Once again, we have to look at the a value, the value in front, to see if it's positive or negative. And this example is positive, so that means we are going to start at negative 3 and go to positive infinity. Okay, and remember that with exponential and logarithmic, the value is an open bracket because it's a line that we approach but we never touch. Okay. In example 5, this is a quadratic function. And as stated earlier in the video, the domain is always going to be negative infinity to infinity. But the range will have some restrictions on it. So you go to the vertex, which is at 0, negative 4. The a value is 1, so that's positive. So that means we start at negative 4 and we go to positive infinity. Okay. All right, let's take a look at example 6. So this is a logarithmic function. And we are going to have restrictions on the domain, but for the range, it's negative infinity to infinity. Okay. So the domain comes from the inside. It's whatever makes this zero. Okay. Because remember that the inside of a log can never be negative nor zero. So that's going to be at x equals negative 2, which if we were to graph this, this would be our vertical asymptote. Okay. So we are going to start at negative 2, open bracket, and go to positive infinity. The coefficient of x is positive, so we're going to go in the positive direction. Okay. Alright, we're going to do one more example together, and then I'm going to have you guys try 8 and 9 on your own. So if you take a look at number 7, 
Hopefully we recognize this is square root. Okay. But what's different is if you look on the inside. So this is 1 minus x. Okay. The starting point is still going to, going to be 1 comma 5. So typically, we've always been going in the positive direction. Okay, but let's test that theory out here. So pick a number greater than 1, so let's say 2, and plug that into the square root function. So 1 minus 2 equals the square root of negative 1. Okay, we can't take the square root of a negative number and get a real number back out. So we can't go to the positive direction. Instead, notice that the coefficient on a, or excuse me, on the coefficient of x is negative. So that flips our direction for the domain. So we are actually going to come up from negative infinity and stop at the starting point. Okay, so once again, let's test another number to make this sure this is true. Let's say we plug in 0. The square root of 1 minus 0 is 1. So the dir direction of our domain is correct. Okay, then look at the a value. In this case, it is positive. So we are going to start at the starting point, which is 5, and go to positive infinity. Okay. All right, so take a moment, pause the video, try out 8 and 9, uh, see how you guys do, and then when you're done trying them, go ahead and hit play, and the answers will be up for you. So in both of these examples, uh, we were going to come up from negative infinity and then stop at either the vertex or the asymptote, depending if it was the quadratic or the exponential, both because a is negative in the examples. Okay, so this concludes our domain and range of functions. Now we're going to talk about vertical asymptotes and holes in the graph. Okay, so how do I identify these? A vertical asymptote is what makes the denominator zero. Okay, so once again, it's a line that, um, that your graph approaches but never touches. Okay, this happens with, as you guys know, logarithmic functions, but we're just going to focus on rational functions on this page. Okay, so for example, if you had 1 over x, then the VA, that's short for vertical asymptote, would be x equals 0. It's whatever makes the denominator 0. Reason being, can't divide by 0. Okay. Let's say we had 1 over x minus 2. The VA would be at x equals 2. Okay, Because if we plug 2 in, it's whatever the denominator is that makes it zero. So and to find the VA, you set the denominator equal to zero. Okay. So a hole in the graph is essentially what it says. It's a hole in the graph. It's an x value that our function can't equal, but that it's continuous on either side. It's not an asymptote changes the direction of our graph. A hole in the graph is literally just a hole. So for example, if your graph is going along, you literally have a hole in it, and then your graph continues. Okay, it's undefined at that x value. Okay. This happens in rational functions when a factor cancels. Okay. For example, Let's say we had x minus 2 over x plus 1 times x minus 2. And as you guys can see, there's an x minus 2 factor in the numerator and the denominator. So if this were to occur, we would have a hole at x equals 2. Okay, You set that factor equal to 0 and you solve, so in this case, x equals 2. And in this example, we actually would also have a VA at x equals negative 1 because there was a factor in the denominator left over. Okay, so whenever you have a variable in the denominator, you are going to have a vertical asymptote. 
Then finally, how you find the domain is you have the interval negative infinity to infinity. Okay, but you have to break at the VAs and the holes in the graph. Okay, all right, so let's work on an example and we'll talk more about the domain as we go. So if we look at example one, okay, we don't have to factor everything, anything, it's good to go, okay, and since nothing cancels, we're not going to have a hole, but there is a variable in the denominator, so we are going to have a VA. Set this equal to zero, and we know that x cannot equal seven. So that's where our VA is at, x equals seven. So then our domain is going to break at seven. So it's going to go from negative infinity to seven, okay, open bracket because it can't equal seven, union symbol, and then 7 to positive infinity. So as you can see, it literally just breaks at 7 from negative infinity to infinity. All right, well, let's take a look at example 2. Okay. In example 2, you will notice that we actually have to do some factoring. So the denominator factors to x minus 6 times x plus 3. Okay. Nothing can cancel, so we still don't have a hole in the graph, but we actually do have two VAs. We have a VA at negative 3 and at 6. Okay. So when we go to find the domain, we actually have to break twice. So negative infinity to negative 3, union symbol, negative 3 to 6, union symbol, 6 to positive infinity. So we break twice at negative 3 and 6. All right, let's take a look at example 3. Once again, we're going to have to factor both the numerator and the denominator this time. And hopefully you notice that we do have a factor that cancels. So we are going to have a hole in the graph this time. And make sure that you specify which one's the VA and which one is the hole. So we have a VA at x equals 4, and we have a hole, just make another line, at x equals negative 2. Okay. So make sure, once again, that you specify which one is the VA and which one is the hole in the graph. When we go to find the domain, we have to split at both, the, or break at both the hole and the VA. So negative infinity to negative 2, negative 2 to 4, and 4 to positive infinity. Okay. Alright, so we're going to do what we did on the first page. I want you guys to... Pause the video, try example number four on your own. When you're done, go ahead and hit play and the answers will be up. Okay, so number four was a little bit tricky. Um, you had to factor the numerator and notice that x plus one canceled. So that made a hole in our graph at x equals negative one. Okay. So when, after we were done canceling, we only had the function x minus 2 left over in the numerator. Notice that there was not a variable left over in the denominator. So this graph actually did not have a VA. Okay, please do not set the numerator equal to 0. Doesn't matter. We don't care about the numerator. It's only when there's a variable in the denominator. Okay, but our domain will still be affected. We will have a break at negative 1. All right, that concludes page two. Last thing that we need to talk about is domain and range of piecewise functions. Okay, and piecewise functions are exactly what it sounds like. Okay, they are pieces. We don't have to graph them, but we do need to look at the domain and range. Okay, this will definitely help us out in our next chapter when we do limits. So it's important to understand what a graph does and how uh, the domain and range can be affected. So remember that domain is always left 
to right. Okay, it's the horizontal direction. So you want to trace your line. So here we have, we come up from negative infinity, and then looking at the x values, not the y values, we stop at zero. Okay, so I'm going to draw that on the x-axis. Okay, and then the blue function starts at zero for the x values, and it continues to the right and continues on. So the domain for this function is negative infinity to infinity. Okay. Now the range is going to be a little bit different. So remember that the range is up and down. Okay. So if I'm looking at the red piece, I'm coming up from negative infinity, and now I'm looking at the y values, and I stop at 4 with an open bracket or open circle at 4. Okay, so I'm going to draw that on the y-axis, and then open circle. Then the blue value, or the blue line, looking at the y value, has a closed y value at zero and goes to negative infinity. But if you notice, that's already encompassed in the line that I already drew on the y-axis. So our range is going to come up from negative infinity, but we stop at four with an open circle. So come up from negative infinity, we stop at 4, open bracket, because that point is not defined. The hardest thing to remember with piecewise functions when doing the domain and range is to make sure that you keep the x values with the domain and the y values with the range. We sometimes tend to confuse those. So if we take a look at example 2, we're going to start off with the uh, domain first. Remember that domain is left and right. So if I look at the red function, I'm coming from negative infinity, and I stop at zero for the y values. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and trace that. So come from negative infinity, I stop at zero, close circle. For the blue function, I start at zero. Once again, I'm talking about the x values. So if I were to write this point here, this point would be zero, negative one. Okay, so starting at 0, and I go to positive infinity for the x values. So I'm going to draw that in. And we cover the entire x-axis, so my domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. Now for the range, we are going to up and down. So if I look at the red function, I'm coming from positive infinity, and I'm stopping at 0 with a closed circle. So I'm going to go ahead and trace that on the y-axis, coming from positive infinity, closed circle. Okay. Then the blue function, I have an open circle at negative 1, and I go to negative infinity. So I'm going to trace that on the y-axis. Open circle, negative infinity. Okay. Now if you zoom in on the graph, you will see that we make a jump. We stop at zero and then we jump to negative one for our range, for the purple. Okay, so that's going to affect our final answer. Okay, now when we do say range, we do say it from negative infinity to positive infinity. So this is going to be negative infinity to negative 1, open circle, so open bracket, union symbol, we start again at 0 with a closed bracket, and go to positive infinity. Okay, so tracing that, coming up from negative infinity, open circle at negative 1, so open bracket, closed circle at 0, closed bracket, we go to positive infinity. Okay, finally, let's go ahead and take a look at example three. 
as you can see this one kind of jumps around a lot so starting with the domain hey okay, remember that domain is left to right let's trace the blue function so the blue function is coming from negative infinity and I stop at negative 2 once again I am talking about the x values so this point here would be negative 2 negative 2 so let's go ahead and trace that so I come from negative infinity I stop at negative 2 with a closed circle okay then for the red function I start at negative 1 because this point here would be negative 1 1 we're talking about the x values so I start at negative 1 and I go to positive infinity along the x-axis so open circle at negative 1 and then positive infinity okay so let's go ahead and zoom in and notice we have a jump I come from negative infinity, close circle of 2, and then I jump to negative 1, open circle, and go to positive infinity. So we have to replicate that in our domain. So negative infinity to negative 2, closed, union symbol, negative 1, open, to positive infinity. Okay, finally, let's look at the range. So tracing the blue function, I come up from negative infinity and I stop at negative 2. Close circle. And then the red piece is really tricky. So if I were to trace the red piece, my value here is negative 1. But if I drop down to this point, that point is actually 0, 0. And then I change directions and go back up. So my very first y value, or my, I should say my lowest y value of this function, is 0. So that is where I start my range. 0, and then I go to positive infinity. Okay. Now any point on the line is a closed circle. That means it exists on the line. So this is going to be a closed circle at 0, and I'm going to go to positive infinity. Now notice for the range, there's a really big jump here. There's this huge gap between 0 and negative 2. So we have to go ahead and write that into our range. So we come up from negative infinity. We stop at negative 2, closed. Union symbol, we start at 0 and go to positive infinity. Once again, the reason why that is a closed bracket, because the confusion sometimes is, well, wait a minute, there's an open bracket at 1. Yes, at 1, but our lowest y value for this function is at 0. Okay, so that means that any point on this line exists, so that's going to be a closed bracket. Okay. So this concludes our graphing unit. Uh, your homework will be worksheet 3, and then when we get back from break, uh, the first day we review, and we do have a quiz on Tuesday reviewing all of graphing. Hope you all have a wonderful spring break, and see you soon.